and welcome to That School Speaks. Today is Monday, September 10th, and this is episode 29. Hello, I'm Amy Beth, also known as the Fat Squirrel on Revel Ram Plaque. Contact me if you'd like to, so I was enjoying hearing from you. Um, if you are a new viewer, hi. If you're a returning viewer, well, hi. <laughs> I guess there's really no differentiation there, is it? I'm just calling you out by what you are. Doesn't matter, I still love you. Hi, hi, hi. Um, oh, I wanted to do something I haven't done in a long time. Thank you. A lot of people who have left iTunes reviews, start or commenty wise. Um, it is very much appreciated. I really do enjoy them all. I read them all. Sometimes I mean, hee hee Okay, I'm always like, hee hee hee, because it's fun. I mean, really. Let's face it, how many times in your everyday life do you get to, like, read a positive review about yourself? <laughs> Exciting and novel. So anyway, I just want to say thank you for all the people who have taken time to do that. It is much appreciated by me and other podcasters. So there. How about that? While I am on the topic of thank yous, I have extra thank yous to send out to Tracy. She donated her real life hard earned in the world, not on just the internet's money. Like, not her fake um, Farmville money. I'm sorry, I don't mean to demean your Farmville money. Is that even a thing anymore? I'm just making stuff up now. Whatever. <laughs> but anyway, thanks, Tracy. It's much appreciated. Um, bah, 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 bah. Okay, there's lots of other thank yous, too. But I'll work them in as I go. Okay, basically, I have lots and lots of stuff to talk about today. I hope I don't go over. I apologize in, in the fronty times. If I do, um, it may happen. I will not talk about shenanigans. Because quite frankly, there's too much to do. Although my kid did learn to tie her shoes this week. Yeah. Um So yeah, let's just let's get into it. The knitting and whatnots. Um the first thing I want to mention. Oh, I have a finished objects. I have a total of four finished objects, which is very exciting, but it's really just two projects. Okay. <laughs> How cute are little socks. They're so awesome. Oh, I have another finished object, which I did not bring, because it's in the mailio. I also finished my bookmark for Sock the Boat. Did you do yours? At first, okay, I'll admit this. I should have known better. But at first, when she was like, knit a rectangle, I was all like, what? That sounds like nonsensical waste of time knitting. Like, why am I knitting a skinny gauge swatch? But of course, there was a purpose. Why did I doubt Mel? Don't doubt her. I mean, unless she does actually achieve political office, then you could doubt her. But I mean, don't doubt her about your knitting. What's the worst that could happen, really, people? But anyway, so I did finish that and sent that off, but I don't have a chase, so sorry. It's a rectangle. Not yay big. <laughs> so anyway, back to this. I'm going to talk these little socks. In fact, there are two of them. By the way, oh, I should have brought my ball of yarn with me that I had left over. I have actually quite a bit of this yarn left over. If I were a better parent, if I were a better parent, I could actually do a longer cuff on my kiddo's sock. But again, and then here are my giant fat lady foot socks. <gasps> Yay! And another one. Oh, oh, okay, I will admit that this project went on far too long. <laughs> I think if I just knit my socks and knit her socks, it would not have bothered me at all. But I did this really stupid thing where I knit my sock and then I was like, oh, maybe I could make my kid's socks too, but I don't know for sure if I can or not. So I'll just start her socks in the middle of my socks and measure, which was perfectly logical. Don't get me wrong. Like that made perfect sense. However, it did make the project take way too long because I had a half finished object for like a year and a half. Not really, but it felt like that. So. But I'm very pleased with them and the lollipop yarn. Of course, enjoyed it with. Why would you even question that? And it's a very nice feeling after it's been laundered. Yay! So there's that. And then I have lots and lots of works in progress. I've had one of those weeks where I just feel like I have been spinning my wheels. Have you? Did you? Of course, you do that. We all have done that. I'm not the only one. Huh. But you do it. You know what I'm talking about, right? So I've totally had one of those weeks where I feel like I've just been working like mad but have gotten nothing done. Now you're going to be like, dude, of course you got stuff done. And I'm like, yes, of course I did. But I have no job. Okay? 
I have no job outside of my home. Now, not to demean the work I do here, because I do do work, but I'm just saying, I should have more to show for my week than this. <laughs> but I do, because I do a lot of other stuff too. But okay, now I'm just rambling. Shut up. Not you, me. Okay, I have to remind myself sometimes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so first thing I'll show you. Okay, so of course, that lovely Diane from the Knittables is having a self-striping knit along. And of course I have to join in. I had no self-striping yarn and stash. I, yeah, I did not own any of that. So of course I had to go buy some. Clearly. <laughs> oh, I'm so lame. But anyway, so I went off into the internets and I found this yarn. Which you're gonna be like, what, what, what? Look at this. How excited about that are you? This is HD Yarns. They have, I think they have six different yarns they produce. They have an Etsy shop, of course, um, which you can't see because my focus isn't on. But anyway, it's HD Yarns. You can figure it out, people. I'll put a link in, of course. Um, this is the Dynamics colorway. They have several that are more traditional in terms of like, um, set repeat rows like you know like the lollipop or like all a lot of other self-striping yarns where you you know you get like oh you get six rows of body blah and then six rows of body blah and then you have a total of four colors i'm sorry i'm being distracted my dog annie no my dog has something really random she's playing with <laughs> where did you get that Anyway, it's not bad. It's like, it was my kid's toys, but it was up high, so I'm not really sure how she got to it. My dog, who is like this tall. <laughs> but she is kind of a gymnast because she can jump up onto our kitchen table from the floor. She's kind of magic. Anyway, I'm so sorry. So, <laughs> so anyway, HD yarns. But can you see from this picture what a unique opportunity this specific one is though and this is why I bought it usually I can look at the self-striping yarn and be all like no I totally don't need that if I just took the time and did it myself I could totally do that and then I never do because hi it's a pain in the arse <laughs> but I'm always like no I totally you don't have to do that oh I have other sock yarn shut your face but then look at this I can't do that. I can't even pretend in my brain that I can do that and then not actually do it. I can't pretend. So of course I had to buy it. So look at these crazy colors. So these are the colors in, that are in the um, yarn. I, I believe if I'm not mistaken, that they don't guarantee that they're necessarily in those orders. However, order, in that order. However, you do get two little hanks, which are in the same order dyed to be matching socks. Does that make sense? But so the reason I got all suckered into it is because look, it's like all different colors and then all different stripe widths. That's totally unique. So you should totally go check them out. Um, yeah. And their yarn is very nice. It is, they put in the, their information that it's a Knit Picks base. One of the bare bases, which I think is like the stroll base for if I can, if I'm guessing. But here's my socks so far. Whoa. <laughs> okay, so this is how the colors work. You start off with just two colors striping, again, random widths, and then your one color changes, so you still have the, f okay. So if you col start off with color A and color one, we'll call the gold color A. Color A continues, color one continues, then color one changes into color two. Well, color A is still striping with color two. Then eventually, color A will change to color B and stripe with color two. And then eventually, color two will change to color three and stripe with color B. Does that make sense? So you always have one. Like, it's not like <clears throat> two different colors. They overlap. That makes sense. The colors overlap. So, yes. I'm excited about those. Um, I am almost ready to put in the waist yarn. This is not the waist yarn. This is, of course, the next color, blue. Here it is in a ball, which my ball is all kind of sad looking. My ball winder has been really cranky with me. What's happening? So it's all, blah. but anyway. And of course you can see on the outside where I, the bad thing about this yarn is you can't just keep knitting. You have to go and see what the next color is. If you're me, if you're a normal human, you can just keep knitting. But if you're impatient pants me, like what am I, what am I gonna get to the blue? 
So I think I'm actually going to do the other one the other way, though. I'm going to start with the pink and brown and then go into the ball. That's very exciting. Oh, and I am just doing a plain, I'm going to do afterthought heel. I think I said that I was about to put the base for do waist starting. And I'm just doing a three by one rib because I like that better. If nothing else, it just makes my socks look nicer when they're not on my giant feet. Anyway, there's <laughs> nothing sadder than like a big floppity sock where you're like, hmm. Again, like the giant underwear that you're like, that can't fit, and then it does. Oh. So, anyway, that's that. HD yarns. Go check them out on Etsy. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay. Okay, next thing. <sighs> My tender sweater. Tender as in fire tender, not as in tender loving care tender. So I am done with it, except I have not put on the button band um, for no good reason, really. <laughs> I just happened. <laughs> There's that. So you can see the... Okay. So this one I worked in one piece. I still have to weave in ends and sew the armholes and put on button bands and all that good stuff. So that's the skinny ones done. <gasps> skinny people, your life is so awesome. Really should probably not be so fat. And then this is where, this is where I was like, oh, I reached one of those. So now I'm working on the man sweater and I'm doing the man sweater in pieces. As I discussed last week, I was afraid it would be too heavy to do in one piece and break my wrists and whatnot. Okay. Okay. So. Here's the man sweater. I finally got to the stinking armhole. It's not, it's 20 inches. So, I mean, it is pretty long. It's, it's okay forever. Pretty sure that in like 700 years when this is unearthed from a Goodwill and an aspiring astrophysicist picks it up off the rack, he's gonna find that there is a fold in the space time somehow knit into the sweater because I swear that it was at 15 inches for like three days. <sighs> then magically I just got to the armhole after three days. But anyway, so oh, it took very long to get there though. Mm. But now of course I'm starting to do the raglan and it'll go much faster. We it gets smaller every time. So of course this is knit which I should have brought the Hank one, but I didn't think to do that. This is, of course, knit with the beautiful Beaverside dry goods and their worsted, which is a 85% merino wool, 15% mohair. Um, and it is mule spun, which usually just indicates that it's spun by a small, small spinnery. <laughs> um, also, I really like to say mule spun because that makes me happy. Um, but also, it is like a... Sorry, my hair isn't it. Um, it is like a b -b 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 like a woolen spun versus a worsted spun, but it's still very strong. You hear it? So it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's great. I love it. What am I saying? Well, so what am I saying? Oh, one of the reasons it's pretty strong, even though it's woolen spun, is because of that fifteen percent mohair. This is very cute. If when you read on their website about what they're doing and why they're doing it. Um, they talk about the reason they use the mohair and they call mohair nature's nylon. <laughs> it makes me so happy. Anyway, so they use the mohair in part to give the yarn additional strength because mohair has a very long staple length and it's a stronger fiber. It's more, it's more that like. Um, so it just makes up, even though you're getting the loftiness of the wound spun, again, this is 241 yards for four ounces, which that's a good ratio of length to weight so it's a lighter yarn um so, so you get the loftiness which can sometimes cause weakness they do uh put a mind to that and use the mohair to help give it additional strength and it is so i can't talk about how nice i love it it's very squishy and nice it's very you could very easily wear it next to your skin i know i like to talk to you about how i like this straight off the the, the you do this, it, it doesn't do that. I mean, it's still very sheepy, but it's very, you can wear it in all of your itchy places and it wouldn't bother you. I mean, it wouldn't bother me. Some of you are fancy skinned or whatnot. I can't guarantee for you people. 
so, um, yeah, I just want to say a quick thank you again to Christine who gifted me that pattern by the Jared Flood, the Tinder pattern. I have enjoyed it so much. And even though I've sorted off the worst white sweaters, I'm really like, mm, I want to make one. <laughs> so there's that. Then I'll talk briefly about the locale. No, wait, I won't do that. I'm a liar. Um, the next thing I'll talk about, I was listening, I was wishing, I was listening to the beautiful Paula of Knitting Pipeline. And I knew she was, I don't know, I knew that it was wonderful and gartery and fabulous. I was like, oh yay, Paula, she's so awesome. And then I listened to her podcast and she started talking about her knit along and I totally got sucked in. <laughs> Damn it. Um... <laughs> Um, because she's doing her knit along. I mean, I, I, knit alongs are fun, but she's also breaking her knit along into chunks. Like you do X number of rows essentially for week one, X number for week two. And somehow the combination of that and how much I love her face collided and made me have to cast on this thing. <laughs> now, okay, here, I'll show you the pattern. Of course it's lovely. There's no question. Not a pearl stitch in it. Gotta love that. Very easy lace repeat. So it's a wonderful on the go project. It's, you don't have to look at, the, once you do the first, you know, two lace repeats, you don't have to look at the pattern again, except when you get to the final edge. You know what I mean. So it's super easy car knitting on the go. I knit mine at the park after I got a good start, which took a minute and I'll tell you why now. Okay, so beautiful pattern, lovely. Okay, so the thing that I am drawn to about the pattern, of course, Paula, of course, knitted, of course, garter stitch. Okay. Oh, so it is a triangular shaped shawl, which I have discussed, I'm not so much in love with. But I said, hey, no problem. I'll just make it half again bigger and we'll make it a three quarter one. No problems. So I started on the merry way. Well, first of all, I had to figure out which yarn to use. I don't have a very big fingering weight stash. Um, and, and not of a very, this is a, requires almost 500 yards. I think it's 440. Okay, so 450. But I figured, I don't know, I always need more because I'm a loose knitter, even when I go down needle sizes. I know, right? I feel like I'm so blabbery today. I apologize. Anyway, it's going to have, I feel like I have so much I need to talk about that I'm like, I'm going to get it all out right now, right now, right now. Um, bah, 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 bah. So anyway, so I was like looking through my yarn, looking through my yarn, trying to find something that would work that I had enough yardage of that, again, pattern is fingering. Um, and I just could not find anything. So then I was like, oh, that's where I totally have some, I don't know how you say it, county, county, it's K-A-U-N-I, effect garn. And I have enough quantity. Now it's technically sport weight, but I figured, hey, what the heck? I'll just make it shorter. Again, the pattern's pretty easy to adapt um, in terms of making it shorter. And it's got this fun color changing thing happening. Um, and it's it's technically a sport, but I think it's a sport primarily because of the furriness or the hairiness of it, because it's very fine. So I thought, yes, that's what I'll use. Brilliant face me, for on. So I cast on. Um, Paula's pattern, I think, originally suggests that you use a size 5 needle, I believe, um, yes. Uh, typically, I would go down two needle sizes, but it's a sport yarn, so for some reason, I decided I should go up two. Whatever. Dumb mistake number one. <laughs> so, I knit through the first two. No, I knit the first one lace repeat, and then a little bit more, and then I was like, this is way too loose, blah. Okay, ripped it back, did the same thing on a size five, blah, ripped it back. I'm on the three at this point, and I say, okay, zit, I'm not, I can't go down any smaller because this yarn, because it is a little bit wiry in texture, I can't get any smaller for this yarn. It's going to just be rigid like mad. Um, and in fact, Arden LYS ha that sells this yarn has several shawls that are knit at that gauge, and they uh, mass happened in it's for, uh, they're like cardboard. 
It's ridiculous. Anyway, I mean, I guess whatever. Your project, what you want, whatever. But I don't want my shawl to be like, Bridget. And be like, meh. So I knew I couldn't go down any smaller. So I was like, this is it. I just gotta do it. So this is, and it's fine. Okay, so this is what I had. Fine, right? Totally. It actually is totally fine. But what I, one of the things that I'm drawn to about the pattern is I feel the squishiness of that garter in the picture and, and, and from looking at other people's um, projects in the knit along thread. I feel the squishiness. This is not going to happen with this yarn. Period. It is a two ply yarn. It's not a round yarn like the suggested yarn. Um, it is, a, it's just not happening. So while this looks very, this looks fine, it does not look like I want it to look. So then I had this moment of like, okay, I didn't have this moment. I had this evening of being like, that's fine. It doesn't look like I want it to look, but this yarn is not going to make something else happen in a better way. It'll just not look like the pattern, but it'll still look nice. It's pleasant to knit. There's only knitting in it. You know, just forge on, dummy face. Okay, then I listened to the rest of Paula's episode <laughs> in which she talked about doing the Susan B. Anderson shawl, the Quaker Ridge shawl. So, of course, I had to go look at that because A, it's called Quaker Ridge, which excites me to no end for some reason. B, I love Quakers. They're fascinating. I love you, Quakers. My friends are, Qu I love Quakers. Anyway, and then Quaker Ridge, I feel like my homestead is on a mountain stop and it's misty and in the valley and whatever, sucked in. So I go look at that and then I look at that pattern and I'm like, that is the pattern for this stupid yarn that I'm trying to make into this other thing. Duh. It's a sport weight. I think it requires like 700-ish yards. I don't have 700 yards of this. I have 600 and something yards. But again, it's very easy to make shorter. Um, and it'll look dark. It's, it's got more stockinette with some garter ridges. And I was like, duh. Oh, look at that synchronicity. I love that. But I was just, I had that moment of like, well, that's the thing I should make with that yarn that is not making into a beautiful Kyla Brooke, which I don't even think I said the name of Paula Shaw. Sorry, Paula. Um, so then I had that moment of like, but uh, so the world spoke to me and I realized that I was a dummy pants. And so I immediately went in on and joined into the Quaker Ridge uh, knit along with Susan B. Anderson because she's awesome face. Um, but I didn't rip this out yet to start because I wanted to show you. Okay. So this is what the Hyla Brooke looks like in a yarn that is fine, but it just doesn't make the pattern happy like it wants to be you know again this would be fine nothing wrong with it it's not the squishy i want the squishy okay so i want to show you that now here is the hyla brook with some fingering weight sanguine griffin from ages on past don't ask me what it is i have no idea i believe it's the eidos base but i could be completely wrong but anyway, I had, I went in the, the and I realized I had started a sweater. I have three skeins of this because clearly at some point in my past, I thought it was a fabulous idea to have a crazy variegated purple sweater. It actually looks very pretty, the portion of the sweater that I have knit. But I don't think I'm ever going to wear a sweater that loud. You know, I'm loud enough on my own. My clothes probably don't also need to be loud. So anyway. I'm going to make the Hyla Brook with it. So again, I almost, I'm doing the three quarters again. Eek. Much happier. Hmm. I would have loved it if I had like a semi-solid, but I didn't. And this works just fine. So, oh, squishy, yay. And also you can see the gauge is like way different. I'm knitting these on the same size needles. These are threes. This, uh, the one that I knit with the crazy pants yarn in the county only has two lace repeats done. This other one in the fingering has three done and they're the same size. So I hope that was helpful. 
Maybe it was just me talking to hear my own voice. Perhaps. But I'm enjoying it much more now that I have my squishiness. It makes me much happier. So, anyway, I'm sorry my needles aren't terribly gigantor, so you can't see as well. But hopefully next time I can get some bigger needles to stretch it out on. But I just want to take the needles out of the other one because I want to show you. Anyway. Oh. This is one of the thank yous I need to say. Look at this! The beautiful Emily sent me presents. And one of them was a sheepy sheepy sheep project bag. From, I believe, Slip Stitch Studios. Let me make sure, because I just may have made that up. Yes, indeed, Slip Stitch Studios. It's a very nice bag. A, it has sheep on it. Win. B, the bottom is with a... Uh, it's like a, I don't want to say duck because that sounds too heavy, but it's something, it's not like a, a regular quilter's cotton. It is, I would call it duck. It's something heavier. Um, and it's got a little texture to it, so it should be very sturdy. And then of course the lovely uh, lining fabric and then pockets this out of the sheepy fabric. <gasps> so, very cute, thank you, Emily. Emily also sent me yarn, which I will show you soon because I'm soon going to be knitting with it. I was so happy to get the yarn from her and the beautiful bag. Then I had this total like hyperventilation freak out where I was like, I gotta I got knit everything. I got everything right now. Knit, 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 knit. So one of the prizes she sent is some Vester, Ves, Vester, Vesper self-striping. So I'll be showing that to you soon because I must knit that for the Alice Square. Diane Knittables. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. The next thing I'll show you is spinning, even though I have another knitting thing, but I'll show you spinning because that one's the Cali and, you know, whatnots. So, this is my local spinning. It is a Shetland. It is a roving, not a top. It is very rustic. It's not very rustic. I shouldn't say that. There's not like, there's not a lot of vegetable matter or anything like that in it, uh, but it is, it's fairly rustic. It's not top, but it's still, I'm still enjoying it. I wanted it to be like a worsted to a bulky um, for knitting presents for the holidays for the men folk. So there's four ounces of it. I have another four ounces to spin, then I'll just two-ply it and work on that. But anyway, I haven't been doing a lot of spinning because again, as I said, I was having hyperventilation, must knit everything moments all week long. So, but I still enjoy the spinning. If nothing else, really your hands just have to do something different every once in a while. So, and that's, of course, to my Sheep Street Studios in, I always, I think it's Morgantown, Indiana, but quite frankly, I'm not sure. It's an M, something Emmy. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay, so, now. Locale. Oh my gosh, I'm enjoying the locale so much. I am so enjoying reading all the boards, reading where you're buying things, where you're finding things, your experience. Somebody was talking about, and I apologize, um, somebody was talking about how she went to an apaca farm and she bought some apaca there and then she got it home and realized it was from Peru. See? It just tells you that our American wool market is wack a -loony, and I know it's alpaca wool, but you know what I mean. Our American fiber market is wack a -loony, that it is cheaper for an actual farmer to have yarn in her shop from another country that is not on this continent even she can get a better profit margin off of that than she can get off her own animals fibers something's not right there i don't know what's wrong how to fix it what's broken but clearly something is askew anyway so um oh so but but, but the thing i'm enjoying is that you're all out in the world Okay, A, I love that you're all out in the world because I love your faces. But I love that you're going out and seeing the farm because that's the beautiful thing about buying local. Um, it's just like the food. There's a question like, should I buy organic? Should I buy local? Blah, 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 blah. Because sometimes we see that organic sticker on the package and we think, oh, it was picked by happy, well-paid workers who had lots of sunblock and they got to rest every hour from picking. It's happier for the... It doesn't mean any of that. <laughs> it means a giant farm probably spent a lot of money to get the USDA to certify them organic. It doesn't mean they love the world any more than any other giganto farmer or their workers. 
it doesn't mean that organic farmers aren't doing those things. It just means that this is not necessarily what you're getting when you buy the organic. You can't differentiate. You know, it's like those cage-free eggs. Well, I mean, cage-free can just mean that there's a door in the chicken coop that the chickens can get out of. If they can't walk because they are mutantly overbred, they can't move, yeah, that's their problem. We got a door. They can get out. Cage-free. Anyway... So that's the whole thing about buying local is that, you know, you can actually go to the farm and be like, can those kids chickens walk? Okay. Do they look happy? Okay. I'll buy their eggs. Um, oh, this organic farm. Oh, but I can actually go there and see that the people that work there are enjoying their jobs and they're getting paid a fair, set, a fair salary and their people are taking care of them. Good deal. Same thing with local wool. You should be able to go and see. Now, I'm not saying that other countries don't have regulations that safeguard their um, agricultural workers and the, I, I mean, the sheepy agricultural workers. Uh, I don't, there's probably a special name for them and I don't even know what it is. I'm not saying that that's not the case, but it's not necessarily the case either. Okay, we read nothing but about how um, there are no safeguards in place for workers in general, let alone agricultural workers who are going to be, you know, in more rural areas have less access to unions and, you know, or don't forget me about unions, but you know what I mean. <laughs> they have less access to protection is what I'm trying to get to. Anyway, ah, okay, I totally just got a rant. Sorry about that. Anyway, um, but if you go to the farm and you see the sheep and you see the people and then you get, oh, you can give the money to that face. You'd be like, here, face, have my money. And then you can walk away, go free. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> like, dude, I so did not sign on for that. Sorry. <laughs> I probably didn't even make any sense. Oh, here's my project. <laughs> Back to the knitting. I'm not a crazy face, except that I totally am. Okay, here are my winterberry knits, fallberry knits. What season are we happening? Fallberry knits by the lovely Ann Hansen of Knit Spot. Let's see there. Okay. Oh, that's terrible. Anyway, so I am almost done with the thumb gusset. Again, I've been trying to keep it kind of, I've been trying to chill. I'm not knit too fast. I won't be totally done before the cast over. But I am nearly to the uh, cast off for the thumb. And I'm enjoying this. It's a very pleasant pattern. It is, um, well, it's, it's very easy to memorize, I, I think. It is for me. It makes sense to me, but some people, their brain doesn't work that way. So... But I think it's a very easy to memorize pattern. It is um, it is a lot of row repeats. Like I think it's 16 rows, but it's only essentially five stitches. It's seven because there's some ribbing in there essentially. Um, but in that 32 rows, there's really only two things happening. And it's the same thing just happening in different directions. So <laughs> more commentary than you didn't that you didn't need. That's what this show should be called. Commentary that was completely unnecessary, unhelpful, and in fact detrimental in its confusing nature. Oh well. Anyway. <laughs> so I am enjoying that. I'm enjoying the cow. Prizes are coming from Eber's Lawn in the mail this week. There's prizes, 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 people. Um. Okay. Last thing. So if you don't want to hear about apples, let's face it, people. You've stuck with me for this long through this many rants. Just hang out. It'll be a few more minutes. Anyway, <laughs> if you have not, if you did not participate in the prize, oh my gosh, so many of you participated. But if you did not participate in the prize because you were like, I don't want any red yarn and crazy face, um, you should totally go and read the boards because... There are so many different varieties of apples. My folks from other countries are chiming in with their apples that I've never even heard of, which makes me want to go visit orchards in other lands. I'm such a dork. It's just awesome sauce. And so then I had to read through all of them. I got so excited that there's so many different ones. I just want to share with you because evidently some of you love apples nearly as much as I do, or maybe even more. Hmm, don't know. But if you like apples and you're at all interested in their appliness beyond the consumption thereof you should totally either watch there's a documentary or there is a book called the botany of desire 
I didn't write down who it's by. Michael Pollan, I'm pretty sure is what it is. It's the guy who did In Defense of Food and The Omnivore's Dilemma, all those things. Anyway, it's available on not on Netflix. Sometimes we like to call that Netflix because that's what it's actually called. It is available on Netflix streaming or otherwise. And the Apple part, if you're not interested in the other parts, but they're awesome. You should totally watch them. Basically, what he talks about is four different uh, plants that we have, as humans have interacted with over the plant's evolution and how basically the plant is using us to keep itself going. So it's very interesting. You always think about, like, we're manipulating the plant. The plant's probably like, ha, ha, ha. That's right, people. Grow me. Grow me. So anyway. So they talk about apples. Ding, 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 ding. Tulips. Fascinating. Marijuana. Of course, fascinating. And I believe potatoes. I could be wrong about that one. I'm pretty sure it's potatoes. Anyway, apple part is the very first part if you're watching the Netflix documentary. It's approximately 30 minutes long. Watch it. If you don't want to read it, watch it. It is awesome sauce. They talk about Johnny Appleseed. I've watched this a long time ago, so I probably should have refreshed my memory, but whatever. They talk about Johnny Appleseed and who he was. They don't go into too much depth about it, and I apologize. There's another book I read about him, but I can't think of what it's called. Or it had a big part of, maybe it was really just The Botany of Desire that I, that I read and had more information. You know, that's probably what it was. The book has more information on Johnny Appleseed, I'm pretty sure. But anyway, they talk about how he went through America and spread apples, and we're all like, oh, Johnny Appleseed's such a folky, like, folk hero, and he's so wholesome and pure. But in reality, he was spreading apple seeds. Apples don't immediately pass on their traits. Like, if I plant gold seeds from a Golden Delicious in my backyard, it will not be a Golden Delicious apple. In fact, it will probably be really awful and bitter. Um, the sweet apples that we eat are the rarity in the apple world. So it talks about how he was spreading the seed and we're all like, oh, he's such a, and he was a folk hero. I'm not trying to diss him at all, but let's just add this additional dimension to him. He was spreading the seed for, for hard cider apples. <laughs> so perhaps he's even more of a folk hero. You know, we may have not made it without that hard cider people. Let's face it. So anyway, so it talks about that. That's fascinating, of course. Then they go to the place in Geneva, New York, which is like the apple tree repository of the world. They even have apple trees, well, the apple seeds from, oh, that's so amazing. The actual, some of the most original apple forests. They're not orchards because they're wild. The apple forests in Kazakhstan, which have recently been destroyed. Um, so they actually went over there on like a seed saving mission. Why didn't they call me? Anyway, so they have all those apple seeds and they have, like, oh, it's just like this biodiversity mecca because again, um, because of the way apples produce, your Golden Delicious is literally genetically the exact same thing as the Golden Delicious 50 states away from you because that's how it works. So there is like an issue of monocultures, especially since your apple, your, st whatever, just watch the documentary. I'm just telling you what happens. You'd be like, dude, I already heard this because that crazy lady was ranting about it. Anyway, it's fascinating. Monocultures are scary. Stay away from them. Oh. So anyway, it's awesome. Geneva, New York, you are awesome with your apple repository. I love your face. And then also they talked to this dude in New Hampshire. I think he's in New Hampshire. New England, whatever. To Midwesterners, it's a state. <laughs> Sorry, New Englanders. I know that ticks you off. <laughs> um, what are you going to do about it? Um, so he, I think it's New Hampshire, though. That makes sense. New Hampshire's so... They're all like messing with the man and stuff. Um, so he has his, he's doing a, he used to have like an, he had an, like an antique apple orchard where he's trying to bring back different eating varieties that are all crazy and awesome and beautiful. But then he's also doing cider apples to make like a fine cider wine, essentially. Anyway, I'm just, oh, shut up, right? Shut up. But it's fascinating. You should totally go watch it. Anyway, prize. You're like, I can't believe she made us sit through six minutes of apple ranting, but you all love apples, so right, whatever. So you get one of these 400 yards of Superwash Merino. I'll send it right to your face. But guess what? I already know who won! Because <laughs> I did it beforehand. There were 219 entrants. There were a few deleted posts, which I took care of and made sure that there were no double entries because, quite frankly, I had to stop myself so many times from being like, oh my god, that sounds amazing! So some of us weren't able to stop ourselves. So just so you know, in case you saw one of those, I did take care of it upset anyway so 
Random number generator 2 to 219. Number 125. And guess what? It is the lovely Knit and Smitten Lynn from Sydney, Australia. PM me, lady. Do you want the dark, the light one? I don't know. Or oh, the dark one. Jonathan, black twig or Jonathan? Isn't that interesting? My body knows which one I'm holding, but my eyes want to immediately talk to my brain faster. That's interesting. Anyway, so just let me know which one you want and I'll go send it across the ocean to you. I've never sent anything to another country. I'm very excited. <laughs> oh, here's my world. It's very small. <sighs> so I'll totally send that to you. And I think that's all. Oh my gosh. You were like, this was the worst episode ever. It's okay. You can tell me that. I know it's very... But anyway, I totally... Let me just make double sure. Oh my gosh. Oh, I forgot one thing. Um, the... A wool gathering is on Saturday and Sunday. That is in Yellow Springs, Ohio. If you're watching this in the past or the future, because you're a magic. It is September 15th and 16th. I will be attending, unless something crazy happens. Um, several other people are attending, and we're going to have lunchy lose at the place. So if you are going and you would all like to meet up, uh, please just go on to the last episode's thread, and you'll see at the bottom, there's been a little, little chatty chat 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 about potentially where to meet and whatnot. So if you don't want to meet up, that's fine. Feel free to say hi. Please don't be insulted if I don't say hi, because I will be like this. Because I am very easily overwhelmed sensory-wise. If you're not going and you live in driving distance, there's going to be ice cream. And yarn. And a fiber. Okay, so I think that's all. And if I don't see you on Saturday, I'll totally see you next week. Bye!